Whenever I get asked to describe my comedy, I always say it as accessible, observational stuff, suitable for the whole family, right? <laughs> then you start reading descriptions of yourself over the years. Mines are always consistent, they're always blunt, brutal, forthright. I don't read reviews, but I saw one by accident recently. It opened with, Fern Brady scares me. <laughs> <laughs> that was a nice review. <laughs> Who's this scary woman they're talking about? I'm a lovable, nice girl. And I'd always wondered why people thought I was aloof. And then um, I was doing a show in Berlin and a woman came up to me at the end and she said, just so you know, your entire set is a description of a woman with Asperger's. You should look at it. <laughs> One guy just laughed there like, oh, thank God, she realizes. <laughs> It was the 10th person that had said it to me, right? One of them was me into the mirror every day. <laughs> Looked in it, uh, started getting diagnosed. I'll be honest, guys, it's not a huge surprise. I've always felt like an alien trapped in a beautiful woman's body. <laughs> the rest of the show isn't a poignant unpacking of the diagnosis and how I came to terms with it, and then we all have a little cry. No. <laughs> I'll just tell you where it affects me, right? I thought it'd be cracking to get to a point in comedy where people recognize you for your comedy and say they like your stuff. Then it started happening and I was like, oh, I forgot I don't have any social skills off stage. <laughs> a guy came up to me in the airport. He was like, hey, I've seen you on YouTube. I really like your stuff. In my head when this happens, I'm always like, ah, thank you so much. The way I responded to this guy, however, was by silently holding out both my hands and holding both his hands and just smiling in his face dementedly, like Kate Middleton when she meets a heroin addict at the opening of community centre. Don't let that put you off chatting to me after, just know I've been coached in how to talk to you by my autism therapist, Jemima. <laughs> I'm not good at being diplomatic, that's my problem. And it led to me having my first scandal in comedy in the last year. Dead exciting to have a scandal as a comedian. Uh, mine started because I was doing some material about a political party called the DUP. Now, some of you know who they are. If you don't, uh, they're these Northern Irish Christian politicians. They hate women and gay people, even though their leader is a stone butch lesbian who doesn't realize she's gay yet. <laughs> um, her name is Arlene Foster. Gay marriage was illegal in Northern Ireland until I started touring this show. Coincidence? <laughs> um, I did some material about Arlene Foster saying she was a homophobe because she was secretly gay and I then performed it on a little known channel called Bibbis and One. <laughs> <laughs> the Bibbis lawyers checked it. I thought I was fine. And then the programme came out two days later and I was made aware of a newspaper story in the Belfast Telegraph, Protestant newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> This is for an American audience, but I couldn't help being like, we'll do some sectarianism for the Glasgow audience. <laughs> Belfast Telegraph did a newspaper story with the headline, the DUP demand an apology from the BBC over comedians' gay jibes. And then there was an unflattering picture of me. <laughs> I was very excited. <laughs> But my agent, Chris, he's always trying to control what I do on Facebook and Twitter because I'm what the industry would call a liability. <laughs> he got on the phone straight away. Don't get into an argument with these politicians. They're not messing about. They'll shoot your knees off. Stay off Twitter. <laughs> Stay off the internet for one day. Okay, Daddy, I'll be good. <laughs> In my head, I'm like, I haven't felt this alive in years. <laughs> I guess off the phone. I went on Twitter immediately. I put up a link to the thing demanding I apologize to Arlene and I wrote underneath, I will apologize to Arlene Foster as soon as she licks my vag and looks disgusted. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make no further comment to the press because I'm a very private person. <laughs> uh, 
so I'm feeling alive. I'm feeling good. The only thing that bothered me about this story was the way I found out about it. And the way I found out was a gay guy in Northern Ireland tweeted me, and he tweeted me trying to cancel me because he was furious at me. He said, how dare you say Arlene Foster is secretly gay just because she's a homophobe? Well, can I just be honest? I think all vocal homophobes turn out to be gay in the end. It's just <laughs> a waiting game, Vladimir Putin, hello. <laughs> Then he said, butch lesbians are never a punchline. That got to me. And then he said, stay in your fucking lane. I was like, oh. <laughs> stay in my fucking lane. I've never been so happy to play in my life. <laughs> my hands are shaking. I'm like, mate, if you're trying to say that I hate butch lesbians, someone needs to tell all the butch lesbians I've dated. Because I'm a bisexual. Oh, game set and match. <laughs> I know one clap for bisexuality in a Scottish audience. Doesn't surprise me. Like, I didn't want to see it was bisexual on Twitter or anywhere. Like, see, if I'm honest, Scotland is barely on board with smashed avocado. Never mind. <laughs> Alternative sexual orientations. It's not just us. A big part of being a bisexual is constantly being told you're not a bisexual. You're going through a phase. You're just whimsical. Oh, aye, that's me whimsy <laughs> down a <at> tea. <laughs> so for years, I tried to get on board with the idea I was a straight woman that just had sex with an awful lot of women. <laughs> Never thought I was a bisexual. I just thought I was a legend. <laughs> it's for your support. <laughs> This guy tweets me trying to say I hate butch women. Obviously, I know I don't, but straight away, I have to publicly beat him in the Twitter argument, don't I? I have to prove him wrong publicly. And the only way I can do that right here, right now, would be to have a three-way uh, with a butch lady and a very timid little Irish man that I'm in a <laughs> long-term relationship with. I go out with a man now. I worry when I say that, there's going to be some of you going, oh, good, good. She's been restored to factory settings. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it wouldn't matter what gender my partner is. He is a civil servant who was born an old man, right? <laughs> he's very, he's a very vanilla type person. And for his birthday, I said, listen, you can have whatever you want. You can have whatever you want, baby. I've got money now. He went. Can I have a shoe polishing kit <laughs> with both black and brown shoe polish? <laughs> Live your dreams. <laughs> Can you imagine having a freeway with that? He'd only embarrass himself. I'd be working away on some woman being incredible. He'd be sitting at the end of the bed crying, <laughs> putting us off, tears dripping onto his little shoes as he silently buffed them. I have an incredibly settled home life, right? And it's nice, but I wish it was more exciting sometimes. And the other day, I was talking to this comedian. She's much cooler than me, and she has a really cool dating life. And she said, oh, so I'm dating Jack and his girlfriend now. I'm in a throuple. Like she was getting a new kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> and for some reason, to keep up with the Joneses, I said, Connor and I are thinking of becoming a throuple. <laughs> <laughs> Went home that night, sitting in bed next to him. He's reading the latest interest rates on moneysavingexpert.com. <laughs> and I said, Connor, could, do you think, can we maybe get a new boyfriend or girlfriend? <laughs> he went, which one of your bohemian friends have you been talking to now? <laughs> What you want to be in a thruple for? <laughs> oh, well, well, maybe then you'd have someone to go to park run with. Because <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> he went, Fern, I've told you, stop asking me deviant things. You have this idea of yourself in your head that you're a mad slag that loves shagging when really you just like coming home to me, having dinner and cuddling. <laughs> <laughs> I went, okay. Can we get a cat? <laughs> Can we get a cat and not fuck it? 
Just a pet cat. <laughs> when people talk about compromising in a long-term relationship, that's the kind of thing they're talking about. <laughs> you start off with high aspirations, throuple, three ways, it descends to a pet that you don't even want. <laughs> I like dogs, now we're getting a cat. <laughs>